Alright everyone, Jacob Looks Light here, and I just finished watching uh, the Christmas special. Um, this is my reaction to it. I just finished about three minutes ago. I just did some quick image gathering, and we are going to talk about it. Um, quick warning, there are going to be spoilers in this review, um, this reaction, because there's a lot I have to say about it. Um, let's start with the obvious. Um, I'm going to start with... Uh, the first thing that really struck me about the episode, um, the direction and uh, the transition from scenes in Tenth Planet to the recreation um, were amazing. I, I like how we, we shot it in this, it was this 4 by 3 aspect ratio, and then we just sort of morphed into this whole thing. Um, the, only, the only, they did have a little bit of a double-edged sword because of David Bradley's delivery of the line, have you no emotion, sir? He, he never had that punch of William Hartnell's, but that's just a small nit nitpick. Um, that is, of course, um, where we start this episode is we start with basically a repeat of the end of The Doctor Falls. From the first Doctor's perspective, we go into the credits. Uh, then we get this captain guy showing up. And then we go into the credits. Then we get the captain's perspective. He's obviously a World War One soldier on the British side. Uh, during the Battle of Ypres, um, just before, again, spoilers, uh, the infamous Christmas truce. Um, if you want more information on that, look up the film Joy in a Well. It's a, it's a great film, especially around the holidays. It's, it, it gives you some really good feelings inside. It's a really, really good film. Uh, but but that, that being said, uh, that being said, we have a lot of things to cover in this episode. Um... It was a 60-minute episode. It has, a, as a Christmas special, it has a lot of problems. Um, for one, it's not because it's, we're trying to be Christmas. Uh, the Christmas tie-in at least makes narrative sense and sort of makes sense as to why. It doesn't sort of feel like a cop-out because it, they're obviously foreshadowing with the fact that this is Ypres in 1914 when the famous Christmas armistice happened. And you're just sort of, you can almost see it coming a mile off. Um... The direction is great. The uh, uh, Rachel Talley, Chris Chimble, you mean to keep her on? She, she has just a way with a camera. She is really good. I love watching just her film and have just the way she frames a shot. She just makes everything just look ooh, so good. Um, she uses a lot of really good shadows. Um, this has some pretty. This episode has a little bit of dodgy CGI here and there, which. Mm, that's a little worrying, um, and it, it's it's really she's using this really the direction really to explore the characters and give the audience something really to enjoy, and I I really applaud her for it. She does an excellent job at just making everything look like it's you know like it's 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 one of those things that you just you see it and it looks amazing. Um, she's just one of those I really hope someone keeps her on because she. Her direction is excellent. She knows exactly how to frame a shot. She knows how to keep a shot to have you basically... She, she knows how to make the shot look like something that you would see... Uh, well, basically that you would you would generally just see. Um, uh, moving on. Uh, the story. Um, Stephen Moffat, he, he writes a plot that is... This isn't really meant to be It's a full story. This is very much a continuation of The Doctor Falls. You have... Really, the twelfth Doctor and the first Doctor both having to come to terms with their regeneration, and you think this is going to be a uh, one of those multi-Doctor stories that they defeat some big threat. Uh, but the big twist is that there isn't a threat this time. Um, I don't quite like the ideas that uh, it's that like oh, is this some of your memories? But uh, that was sort of a good way to get Bill back into the narrative. Um, I mean, also at least acknowledges that. Bill does eventually die. Um, I'm still not happy that Bill survived, but the way she appeared in this episode at least made sense um, and didn't leave me groaning as much as it easily could have because that was a big problem I had with the Doctor Falls was that Bill should have just stayed dead. She should not have been allowed to survive through a, what was essentially, you know, being converted into a cyber because of the puddle MacGuffin. Um, so, you know, you, you you really get a sense that this is Peter Capaldi, get, uh, the Doctor essentially finding his will to live. I feel like 
uh, the world enough in time and the doctor falls really left him beaten and broken and this is sort of the whole theme of this is this getting just this new lease of life which is amazing there are a bunch of little references um of course we have um a couple of things that weren't necessary i think a lot of the fa- the fact that we had i don't know what i would replace it with but the whole rusty thing get, getting into the dalek database is a bit it's just a bit too dumb um I mean, there's no reason the TARDIS couldn't figure that out. Maybe they would just... I, I would have I would have rather had the Doctor just go back um, and, and probably just... I, I'd even say go back to Gallifrey or, or even go maybe go back to the library, call back to one of Moffat's most acclaimed episodes. Just don't randomly decide, we're going to go and bring this Dalek back that no one really remembers. Like, that was, what, two, three years ago when Series 9 aired? Series 8 aired, I mean? That was, yeah, that was all in Series 8, and having that take take place in the finale is very, just a very weird sort of thing. Um, uh, I'm driving to it. Um, and now we have the big problem, uh, my biggest, one of the, some of the biggest problems with the episode well, oddly enough, was the ending itself. I, I liked... I think it would have been fine if Capaldi... Um, if instead of actually... Okay. Uh, I would have been fine if... Okay, how do I want to phrase this? This is very important to phrase properly. Um, but I would have been fine if Peter Capaldi was if the Doctor was able to reunite with Bill and Nardle, and maybe... I, but I, the Clara cameo was just... It was a bit too much. Um, I think this was... All, I think that entire sequence was a bit too self-congratulatory. I mean, maybe just... I don't know. I, I wouldn't have done it with actual cameos. I would have maybe had them go off in his head just as voices with some newly recorded dialogue or maybe like a vision of the past, not necessarily having them there. This is almost a bit too self-congratulatory there and I really didn't like it. Oh, that really brings it down. This episode, this episode is actually, it's a pretty decent episode. It's just got these bunch of problems and there's the big elephant in the room that I am dreading to get to because I don't, um, mainly I think some of the stuff was a bit too two stuff, like the captain being, oh, it's a ancestor of Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart's, because that's just sort of a thing that Doctor Who seems to do now. I I absolutely hate when Doctor Who does that now. You just sort of have, oh, it's the Brigadier's father, oh, Cyber Brig, really, Moffat? Um, and, I mean, you just, you have, it's, it's trying, this is, it's, the episode, mainly, the problem is, it continues the trend of regeneration stories, having fun with all the era, um, with all the rest of the years. And oddly enough, one thing that I was not actually, was, was actually worried about what didn't happen was David Bradley taking over the special as if he was, um, as if he was, you know, if he was the main doctor in charge of overshadowing Capaldi's exit. Uh, I, I very much feel that the first doctor was used very well for the most part, except the whole he's a sexist thing is dumb, like, uh, like, there there were just these lines where it's like, oh, Polly's not with you because it's so dirty. Yeah, Polly never cleaned the TARDIS. The doc and, you know, like, the doctor never sent her, he sent her away to make coffee, and that was the second doctor quite a bit. And, you know, that was, you know, when, you know, when that happened, most of the time it was, well, like, that was when she was able to figure out how to melt the Cyberman's chest units in the moon base. That's when that, that was the most famous example of that. Like, that was, that was just... Or, and it's like, oh, oh, yes, all women are made of glass. Like, r- really? I don't, that just, it doesn't, that doesn't sound like something even the doctor would say. I mean, it, it, it just, it, 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 it just takes you right out of the episode, and you're like, this is Moffat trying to ascend, I don't know if I'm reading into this too much, but it's pretty much trying to be like, oh, look at you, you're not accepting of women or something. I don't know, it's, it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense as to why that would be in the episode at all. Like, why would you 
why would you include that Moffat? It it's 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 unnecessary. It really isn't anything uh, any other than like that. And David Bradley, in because I've I've I started listening to at least so far in the uh, Big Finish audios that he's been in because I I've listened to some of the first one. Go to Big Finish right now they, and get the first Doctor Adventures because. Well, they, they, they both, at least the first one is, they're both dealing with some pretty good concepts for Christmas. And, uh, yeah, it's just, give it, it, finish all your money, is what I'm trying to say here. But, that wasn't the doctor. It, it just, it doesn't feel right. Like, and the, I'm gonna give you a jolly good smack bottom, like, okay, so he said that in his ear once, yes. And please argue this in the comments. But that was to his granddaughter. Like, yeah, that was... And it wasn't necessarily, I don't, that the delivery wasn't necessarily in series, because they were sort of joking around after the Daleks had been defeated. Um, also, love the shot of the, do- the first Doctor picking up the Dalek eye stock, that was creepy. And there were a bunch of, like, cringy jokes like that, where it was awful, like, and you could easily have that sort of, co- maybe, different time thing with the Captain, who is a character from 1914, um, and the captain was a very compelling character. Mark Gaddis was really good as the guy. Like, he, 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 he made it, I, I also, he, he made the role his own. He was really good. He wasn't trying to be like, I'm, he was always trying to be his own character as if he wasn't an ancestor of the Brigadier. Um, he had some great scenes with Pearl Mackey. Pearl Mackey was great. The acting in this was amazing. Um, and, uh, but that, and then there's one, the, the, the other problem that really sort of, brings this episode down quite a lot is the regeneration um leading up to it uh, it's not as bad this was not this is by no means the worst regeneration we've had i will still maintain that the worst regeneration in canon that we have is 10 to 11 with i don't want to go being the final line you could have cut the doctor's speech down qu- quite a bit um how i would have done it i would have ha- i would all right you'd have the line uh, basically, it was essentially like um, there was something around the long lines of, all right now it's time to let go, um, and then maybe just have maybe one more word. Oh, now it's let me like just there's a easy cut off point where you can cut, you can do a quick jump cut and start the regeneration if you were editing this episode down like before, just before the doctor goes into his final speech about being loving and kind and how love is always right and hate is always wrong which. Yeah, it's a beautiful ideal, and it's sappy for the holidays, but that's also kind of dumb, because love isn't always right, trust me. You can fall in love, and that could ruin your life. Like, not saying... I'm not trying to say don't fall in love, because I'm not a total miser. Like, like no, no, no. If you, if you find someone you really love, fall in love with them. But, again, it's, and hate isn't necessarily always wrong. You sometimes hate is... I, I get it, it's moral questions here, but it's... It's a bit dumb. I don't know. Um, and, but uh, but I did actually like how they sort of... Uh, how Rachel Talley framed the regeneration. She she actually went close up on the eyes of Capaldi when we were doing in the middle of the effect during the shift. I wish they didn't use that same effect because... Well, that effect has been used for so long now. It looks... It's, I'm, I'm done with it. I like how they updated it a bit, but still. Um, also, we get to see the... Trout and regener the part on the Trout and Regeneration, which was great just to see again. Um again, this is an episode that was sort of pulled together at the last minute so I can understand how a lot of it necessarily doesn't make sense. And, you know, Jody Whitaker's first scenes, um still not not nearly enough to judge her as a doctor if she's gonna be good in the role. Um but she's obviously enjoying herself. Um and you know, giving us a cliffhanger of the TARDIS crashing is a I'd say it's a bit too uh, it's a bit, I, 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 I don't want to be nit, nitpicky, but it's just a bit too excuse, like, we need to stop with the do- TARDIS crashing, it's almost like we're trying to outdo the TARDIS crashes, uh, from 9 to 10, it, uh, the TARDIS just does a mild crash into Rose's home, 10 to 11, TARDIS blows up, crashes into Amy's garden, uh, uh, um, 11 to 12, TARDIS crashes, gets eaten by a dinosaur and spit out, and with, and now this one, the TARDIS is crashing, and the doctor falls out, it's, it's just sort of these big levels that I think is a problem, um, that being said, I did enjoy the episode, um, I'd probably, though this, uh, for preliminary ranking, I'd probably give it a 7 out of 10, 
Um, I'm ready to bring see Jodie Whittaker. I hope we get a trailer very soon. Because I, I want to get an idea of how she's going to play the role. Uh, but that's, of course, that's going to be for Series 11 reactions, which hopefully will be followed next year. Um, so, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Um, even though this is coming out late, on, very, very late on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. Um, uh, Happy New Year. Happy Holidays for you who don't celebrate Christmas. Please leave a like. Please comment and please subscribe. And, you know, just... Uh, Bring on, I guess, bring on Jodie Whittaker. <laughs>